Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are going to look at another way in which we can calculate the expected value of a beta distribution. Uh, so the other way we can do it is by remembering that w is in fact equal to x uh, divided by x plus y. And uh, what we're going to basically do is say that the expected value of w, which is our random variable, which is beta distributed ab, is therefore equal to the expected value of x divided by x plus y. Okay, and what um, what happens basically is uh, that um, we can. Uh, the way in which we can do this, basically, is we can say the expected, if we imagine what w times x plus y, if we said make this a, make a new random variable, which is w times x plus y, then what we know is that the random variable w times x plus y is just going to be the random variable x, okay? So that is going to equal the expected value of x. Now, what we're going to what what I want you to remember is that in previous videos we called this random variable x plus y we called that u, and what we have there is the expected value of w times u, and we know that that's going to be the expected value of x basically. So let me just review what I've done there. I have said consider a random variable which is w times x plus y. Now x plus y is never going to be a negative. It's never going to be zero, so you don't have any problems with dividing through by zero here and things going uh, bodge because of that. Uh, because x and y are both strictly positive, so x plus y is also going to be strictly positive. Okay, so I then said construct this random variable w times x plus y, and we know that that is going to be the random variable x. Um, in fact, that was our pink transformation before, that w times u was equal to x. Okay, now, if w and u were both, um, were both independent, then this would be equal to the expected value of w times the expected value of u, and that would equal the expected value of x. And therefore, that would imply that the expected value of w was just equal to the expected value of x time, uh, divided by the expected value of u. So let me just remind you what the random variable u was. u was our ra another name for our random variable x plus y, the convolution of these two, which maps you onto the positive real numbers. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, what we saw, what we saw was that. Uh, so let me get another piece of paper. What we saw in the previous video was that this random variable u, so if this is our probability space, here is our random variable u, which is x plus y, then u is going to be gamma distributed uh, with parameters a, uh, so it's going to be pra uh, di gamma distributed with parameters a uh, plus b lambda. Okay, we also know that the random variable w uh, was going to be uh, beta distributed. We saw that we've seen that w was going to be beta distributed with parameters a times b. Now, uh, many videos ago, what, what video did we do this? We did this probably in the video on the connection between the gamma and the beta distribution. Uh, we saw how to calculate the joint probability density function for u and w, basically, as a function of little u and little w. And what we found, in fact, have I got the piece of paper still for where we found this? Um, where is it? Okay, yes. Um, where is it? No, that's not it. Um, <laughs> in fact, is that it? Yes, here it is. Here it is, basically. Exactly the, the probability density function, the joint probability density function, was here, basically. So if I just copy that out, uh, this is the uh, probability density function is equal to lambda u to the power of a plus b uh, e to the negative lambda u divided by gamma times a plus b u uh, times w to the power of a minus 1, 1 minus w to the power of b minus 1 times gamma of a plus b divided by gamma of a times gamma of b. And if you don't remember that, I do advise you to watch the, um, watch the videos on uh, the, uh, well, I don't expect you to remember it off by heart, uh, but if you don't remember where that came from, if you don't understand where that came from, I advise you to watch the videos on um, the connection between the uh, gamma and beta distributions. Now, what you will note is that here is just the probability density function for this random variable u. 
And here, sorry, I've overlapped the boxes a little bit, but this one here, so if I get the highlighters out, this one here, to make it look more interesting than this, uh, okay, so this one here is the probability density function for this beta one up here, okay? So basically, this in fact is just equal to the marginal distribution uh, for the random variable u as a function of little u times the marginal distribution for the random variable big w as a function of little w because this is this pink one here this okay and this other one the marginal distribution of the random variable big u is equal to this one here this gamma distribution here which is this Okay, so uh, they are just multiplied together like that, and that implies that U and W are independent, basically. In fact, that is exactly the definition of them being independent, that the joint probability distribution is just like this. So, when we take the expected value of U times W, which, since W was defined to be X divided by X plus Y, and u was defined to be x plus y, when we multiply them together, w times u is just going to equal x, so this is the expected value of x. Well, uh, because they are independent, we can know we can split up the expected value into the expected value of u times the expected value of w is equal to the expected value of x. Okay, right, uh, so uh, the expected value of w is therefore equal to the expected value of x divided by the expected value of u. So now what we need to do is just calculate the expected value for some gamma distributions, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, let's do a bit of a recap of how we calculated the uh, the uh, probab uh, sorry how we calculated the expected value for a gamma distribution because remember x is gamma distributed a lambda a lambda and u is also gamma distributed. Uh, a plus B lambda. So all we need now is to know how to calculate the expected value for a gamma distribution. So uh, before, uh, when we originally calculated the uh, first moment for gamma distributions, the way we did it is we got the moment generating function and then just differentiated it and evaluated it at t is equal to zero. In this case, uh, to do it differently, we'll just go from the definition basically. So, if we work out this for one of them, then we can just substitute in a plus b instead of a, basically. So we'll work it out for x, and then we get what it is going to be for u as well. Okay, so the expected value of x is going to be the integral, uh, strictly speaking, from negative infinity to infinity of the probability density function of big X evaluated at little x, at uh, times little x dx. So that's just the definition. Uh, of course, we know that the probability density function for a gamma um, random variable is going to be 1 over gamma of evaluated at a, uh, lambda times x to the power of a, e to the negative lambda of x, divided by x, and that's going to be that on the positive real numbers. It's going to be 0 everywhere else. So this integral basically becomes the integral from 0 to infinity, because on the negative numbers, this PDF is just 0, so that integral, that portion of the integral contributes nothing. Okay, then we have the x from here, which I'll just put there. Then we have 1 over gamma of a times lambda x to the power of a times e to the negative lambda of x divided by x uh, dx. Okay, right, so uh, this x and this x uh, look uh, to cancel one another out, basically. Uh, however, uh, it's probably um, not the best idea to do that at the moment, because we want to try and get this uh, so that it's going to be the PDF of some other gamma distribution, basically. So, what is probably a better idea to do is multiply uh, top and bottom by lambda. So, um, basically, what I'm going to do, I'll write it out separately. I'm going to multiply by lambda and then divide by lambda. So, these lambdas cancel one another out. And then I'll put an x there, the x from here. Then we'll pull out this 1 over gamma of a, because that's just a constant, so we'll get that over there. Then we'll have e to the negative lambda of x. Oh, sorry. This lambda of x, we missed a bit out. We get this lambda of x to the power of a. Then we get e to the negative lambda of x. And then we'll keep this 1 over x down there, dx. Okay, right. Next move is to combine this lambda of x with this lambda of x here, basically. So uh, this is going to become... Uh, we'll keep this 1 over gamma of a lambda here. And uh, we're going to get... Oh, so I'll replace the limits of integration. We're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity of lambda x to the power of a minus 1 
e to the negative lambda of x, sorry, a plus 1, I do apologise, divided by x dx. Right, that looks exactly like the PDF for a gamma distribution, where instead of having a gamma distribution a lambda, you have a plus 1 there. The problem is we don't have the 1 over gamma of a plus 1, but we know how to resolve that. Just put it in. So we just put gamma of a plus 1 to finish it off and get it perfect, and then of course we have to make it true, so we have to put a gamma of a plus 1 in the numerator as well, so that that cancels the gamma of a plus 1 that we put in the denominator here. Okay, now this is exactly the PDF of a gamma distribution which is distributed a plus 1 lambda. So it has to integrate from 0 to infinity to equal 1. So that integral has to equal 1, basically. All of this has to integrate to 1. Okay, and the reason is that it's just a PDF that uh, is defined on the positive real number it's just zero everywhere else, we know that. So the integral from zero to infinity of this PDF on the positive real numbers has to equal one, because PDFs have to integrate to one. And on the negative numbers, it's just zero, so that's going to contribute nothing. So um, that implies that our expected value of our gamma distribution is going to be uh, gamma evaluated at a plus 1 divided by gamma of a uh, lambda. So let me write that out again over here. So it's going to be gamma evaluated at a plus 1 divided by gamma evaluated at a times lambda. Now, we use an identity about the gamma function, which is that gamma evaluated at a plus 1 is just equal to a times gamma of a, which uh, should bear resemblance to the factorial function. So now we substitute in here uh, a times gamma of a uh, in place of gamma of a plus 1, and then we have in the new denominator still gamma of a times lambda, and now the gamma of a is cancelled and we get a divided by lambda as the expected value of a gamma distribution. Okay, so that was the expected value for a gamma distribution which was distributed a lambda. Therefore, just substituting in, uh, instead of a, we're using a plus b, so now substitute a plus b in where a is, because this is exactly the same problem. Uh, this is just taking the place of where a was before. So a is now going to be equal to a plus b, so just substitute it in and you'll get that the expected value of the random variable u is equal to a plus b over lambda and the expected value of the random variable x is equal to a divided by lambda. Okay, right, so if we want to calculate the expected value of w, uh, which is the expected value of our beta distribution, uh, then if I do it here, the expected value of w is going to be the expected value of x, which is a divided by lambda, divided by the expected value of u, which is a plus b divided by lambda. Now just cancel the division by lambda, or multiply top and bottom by lambda, and you get that that is equal to a divided by a plus b, which is the exact same expected value as we got doing it the other way.